Hey, what's going on guys? This is Mike from Mobox, and in this graphics video tutorial, we're gonna be taking a look at how to intelligently link items in After Effects, so that way you can copy basically the motion, the opacity, the position of different objects and link them with other objects, so that way you don't need to copy keyframes or try to replicate um, complicated graphs from the graph editor. So anyways, again, we already have After Effects open. I've already set up a couple um, examples here just so I could show you. So the first one's opacity. So you see here that, that this little man figure, I don't know why I chose that, but this little man figure kind of has, has, a, has a very strange opacity kind of map to it. And when we come in, into it, oh, by the way, I spelled dollar wrong uh, for that layer. Um, when I come into the um, opacity, sorry, press T on the keyboard, you see that there's some weird keyframes and and I mean, uh, if I want to go into the graph editor and, and I look at opacity, you see that that it's pretty not that cool. It's it's uh, there's no way I'm going to be able to replicate that on this. Um, I guess one way I could have done it was I I could copy the opacity and paste it on the dollar. Um, but then now the keyframes are not lined up, and then if I make any changes to the uh, the opacity map on the man, it's not being reflected. By the dollar and I and I want them to be linked together so um, that does not work for me so let's see here <clears throat> just deleted those so what I did here so I have the dollar which I'm actually gonna rename that's that's bugging me so I've got the dollar here and I'm gonna press alt and I'm gonna collect click the little timer what this does is it brings up the scripting portion of After Effects, which you may have messed with, you may not have messed with. Personally, it scares the crap out of me, so I barely go near it. Um, but this is a really simple way to link objects. So after you press Alt and press the little timer, you see that this is red now. That means that I could change it, but if I link this with anything, it, it defaults to the, to the script. But what I could do is I could pick this little extension whip, and I could select Opacity on the dummy character. So now, they are intelligently linked together. And so when I change the opacity map on the on the little on the dummy character, it also changes it on the dollar bill. No matter what I do, this dollar bill will always be linked to this man in terms of opacity. So there's some other cool things you could do with it. So we're gonna go in here into scale. Let's say this white bar, we want this bar to kind of scale up and down with the size of this dollar bill. Maybe that's something that, that, that you wanna do, maybe to show like, oh, this is at max scale, this is at minimum scale, it can kind of give a cool effect. So you see this dollar bill again is scaling in, in some pretty strange ways. Again, I can I can copy the keyframes over, but if I if I need to make changes to the dollar bill, I'll, I'll have to make the changes to this, and um, there's just an easier way to do it. So you see here, um, under here, I've got this little gray box, which we don't even need to touch. I'm just gonna um, actually put this underneath um, so that way it doesn't get in my way um, but this top this top white bar so I have the the I guess the center point list towards here at the end it just makes a little bit kind of gets the effects better um, if you press Y on the keyboard or select the center point you could you could just drag it over to the end um, but what I can do here is if I hold alt on the keyboard and press the scale button on this top white layer on the uh, little time scale thing I can again um, drag this whip. Now I only want it to change in the X direction. I don't want it to change in the Y direction. If I just drag it over to scale, you'll see here that, that, that it scales in the X and Y direction and that might be what you're looking for. I'm not looking for that. I don't want that, that doesn't work for me. So I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna just put it over the X. Now you get this and it'll still scale in all directions, but what you could do here is that um, you get these two new new things. It's it's temp comma temp. This is X. This is Y. For the Y, I'm just going to highlight it and put value uh, bracket zero end bracket, and now it will only scale in the X direction. But what you get here is this cool little effect where, um, as the dollar bill scales, the the I guess rectangle scales the same percentage as the dollar dollar bill. So that's kind of a cool effect that you can get with scaling the object. So the last one we're going to look at is position. So let's say let, let's say you have this this ball and it's traveling to the other side, and you like how it bounces, and and you don't really want to be able to you don't want to really copy and paste it and, and mess with it, um, but you also want these balls to go with it. Well, 
since that's bigger, you might want it to not kind of bounce as much. You might want it to, its position to change on as much. The smaller one, you might want the position to change a lot more. So what you could do here is, because they're staggered, you gotta kinda do a little work around, unless you wanna dig into the scripting, which I don't. So I'm just gonna go layer new null object. I'm just gonna duplicate this, so I have two. And I'm gonna drag this one over this small one. So this middle one is the one with all the motion added to it. So I'm just gonna press P on the keyboard because that's the, the, the effect that we're doing. We're changing the position here. And I'm gonna get the position of this, of this, uh, I guess, null object. And I am going to, again, hit Alt, hit the timer, drag the, the pick whip over to one of these options here. We want it to be in the X. So now I'm gonna open this up and we're gonna make some changes. So let me just extend that. Again, we only want it to happen in the X direction. We don't need it to happen in the Y direction. If we had it happen in the Y direction, you'll see here that this null object, um, it travels kind of in a weird diagonal direction. We don't want that. We only want it in the X. We're just gonna change this again to value bracket zero and bracket. Now we'll, now we'll have it in the X but we want this small ball to not go as far, or, or we actually want it to go farther because it's smaller, it, with the same amount of force, it'll go farther. So we can come in into this temp value, which is the X value, and multiply it by like 1.4 if you want. So now when it goes, when it moves over, it goes a lot farther. Now all we need to do is, is pair up the small ball with the null object, like that, and when it goes over, it'll go a lot farther its position will change a lot more. You could basically do the same thing with the large ball. Position, position, Alt, click the timer, drag it over to the position, and instead of temp times 1.4, we might do times 0.6, but we, got, we can't forget to change this back to value zero, otherwise we'll run into problems, and then you just attach the large ball to that null object. And now what you get is something that looks like that. So there you have it. Now any changes I make to uh, to that middle ball's motion, the same will happen to all of them. So there you go. Um, I hope that helped. It's just kind of a simple, cool little tool that, that I found out. Uh, it, it should help in a lot of the other compositions that I used to make that I didn't use this tool. And a lot of my old tutorials have, have me copying keyframes and, and duplicating layers and stuff like that to try to get get around this and, and really what you should just wind up is more complicated um, After Effects compositions when really if you want to dynamically link these things it's really just that simple. So anyways I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did give it a like, subscribe, and be sure to check back next Wednesday for another tutorial. Anyways guys, thanks for watching.